This may be the best thing I've ever made. Hey folks, welcome back. As many of you know, I have kind of struggled with finding my own personal style. And to be really honest about it, I still really don't have any idea what that is. I would say 90% of the time, I'm probably just wearing t-shirts and jeans. And that's not a style. It is comfort and it is fine, but it's not a style. I like all kinds of stuff. I see pictures of dresses and skirts and tops and pants on Pinterest and Instagram, and I love them. I think they look beautiful and cute, but I just don't see myself wearing them. And when I do, it doesn't feel authentic. And so that search for, I guess my comfort style, I guess that's a thing, is still going. With all that said, I think I finally had a revelation and it came from this picture. I think I know why it resonated with me so much. If you're not familiar with the person in this picture, this is the character Claire Frazier from Outlander. I have been a big Outlander fan. I made it through most of the books and slowly I've made it through the whole series. And as the series has gone on, I've connected more and more with the character of Claire. I think because, I mean, she's, she's just a badass. She is smart as a whip. She can hold her own around men. And stylistically, her character arc has her keeping up with fashions when she needs to. But more often than not, she seems to fall into this men's wear as women's wear style. I absolutely love it. I don't have any interest in wearing corsets and stays and the really low cut tops that that part of history tends to wear. But when events in the story lead her to maybe have to improvise her outfit a little bit more, it really does look like she melds the feminine part with the long skirts and, I don't know, corseted tops, but she adds the menswear part to it. And very typically it is in really neutral tones. You don't see her typically wear a whole lot of bright colors. It is natural fibers and it fits well, but it still looks comfy as and that's where I want to live stylistically. I'm not interested in frills. I'm not interested in ruffles or even wearing bright colors all the time. I just want things that look good and fit and are comfortable. As her character starts getting more and more into her job, her clothing becomes more and more utilitarian while still maintaining the style part of it. She has pockets in everything. She wears these big belts that have pouches on them and she carries a lot of crap with her and her coats are long and they're warm but they're still tailored to her in a way that just seems to make sense. So in this video I am going to attempt to channel this character into a style that I think I'm gonna love. What that kind of entails is a couple different pieces. From the original photo that I shared I want to try and make an apron very similar to what she has on here. I love the big pockets. I love the big straps. I don't like the teeny tiny little apron straps that you see in commercial aprons. They dig into my neck and they're really uncomfortable. And I like that it's a little oversized. I also want to make a belt. I don't think this is going to be very difficult. These belts that she wears are very, very simple, but again, they're there to carry stuff. And then finally, I want to try to do some sort of bottom. I, I'm thinking a skirt. We'll see how that part goes. The first place I'm going to start is the apron because I don't have a pattern for it and I'm just kind of winging it. So let's start there. For the apron, I'm going to make it out of just a very simple white cotton bed sheet that I found. The weave on this and the drape on it reminds me of linen. And I'm positive that that's what hers is made out of. I'm pretty sure that just about everything that she wears is linen or wool. There may be some cotton thrown in there, especially when in the story arc takes them to the United States. 
but I'm going to try to keep most of what I do today in the linen family. We are in the middle of summer, so may as well keep it light, I guess. So we're gonna start with the cotton apron and see how that goes. Bah! I first started by taking a few measurements, including my bust, the strap length, and how far down from my collarbone I wanted it to start. I transferred those measurements over to some graph paper and kind of sketched out the overall shape that I was looking for. And once I was fairly happy with that, I put my fabric down, transferred my measurements over to that, and started cutting. Once I had the front all cut out, I pinned it to my shirt just to make sure that the top of it was the right width. I didn't want it to be too narrow, but I also didn't want it to be too wide. So I took a couple of inches off of that. I think it wound up being about 10 inches wide. Gave the entire thing a good press and then decided that I was going to give it a tea bath so that it didn't look quite so crisp and white. So this was for nothing. For the tea bath, I did use some old Chinese tea that I got when I was visiting, as well as a couple of bags of black tea, and I put it all in that little guy. It just floated in there. And then I attached my pockets, because you need pockets. Once I hand tacked a number of the edges down, it was time to work on the belt. For the belt, I used a side of veg tan in probably a two to three ounce. This stuff is pretty old and it does have some water stains, so I think it was perfect for this application. I also looked through my jar of buckles, because everybody needs a jar of buckles, right? And that buckle was an inch and a quarter wide, so I cut an inch and a quarter strip. I wrapped it around just to make sure I'd have enough dangly bits on it. And then I skived up the edges, that's not the right term, but I rounded them out a little bit. And then I applied some mink oil just to rehydrate it a little bit and kind of bring some of that luster back in because it was looking a little sad. I did make a belt loop so that the belt would have something to tuck into. And I got it attached to the belt itself. All in all, took maybe 15, 20 minutes. And it was pretty easy. I didn't burnish the edges, but you could do that too if you wanted a more finished look. But I don't. Finally, for the bottom piece, I needed buttons for the closure. And so I dug through my jar of buttons to find anything that remotely matched. And this was the closest I came, but I do really love them. I used my machine to put in the buttonholes. I hand sewed the first button and then machine sewed all the other buttons. I just think it's pretty cool that your machine can put on buttons. Then I tried them on just to make sure that they fit and they did. Seriously, this was the highlight of my weekend, realizing that these things actually fit. With the pieces all complete, it was time to put them all together and see the final product.
I think this is my favorite thing I've ever done. I don't know how I lucked out, but as I was trying to find a skirt that I had already started, I actually ended up finding these pants that I mostly made and they worked perfectly for this. I made them when I was in the middle of my Winslow culotte phase and I never put a zipper on them. I did hand dye them myself so the gray is pretty splotchy but it turned out to be the perfect opportunity to just put a visible front button fly on it instead which I think makes it a little bit more historical. I love them so much and I may have to make more because why have one when you can have half a dozen? <laughs> the belt I think I put together in maybe 15-20 minutes and that includes having to find all the tools but I think it turned out really really well and now I want to make skirt hikes and pouches and things that will go on the belt. As far as the apron goes it's not the prettiest thing I've ever made but it does look like it was handmade because it was. I think I'll really use it. The pockets are really really big. It's big enough that I don't feel like I'm being constricted but it also doesn't flow everywhere which is nice because I don't want it dragging in things when I'm working around the shop. So yeah I mean this feels like me. I feel like I could go out in public and not feel like I'm wearing a costume uncomfortable in my skin I guess. I'm not super used to pants that are you know culottes I guess but I just love them. I do think I need to add one more button to the fly. It was gaping just a little bit when I was doing the reveal footage and I had to go in and pin it so that it didn't flash the world. I do think I need to put at least a snap if not another button in there but other than that amazing. I don't know how I lucked into it but good job past me for thinking about future me. So given all of the inspiration that this show gives I think it's fair to say that you can expect more Outlander inspired projects from me. There are so many jackets that I want to make. So if you want to see more of that kind of content and you like what you saw Give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe so that you know whenever I post a new video. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. I love it. And so much space. This is how people should dress all the time. This is awesome. Yeah. There may be some cotton thrown in there, especially oh,